You are surrounded by voices. They influence who you are and encourage you to chase your dreams. But some voices hold you back. They say you can't do it. You're too loud or too quiet, too slow, too hyper, too distracted. You're just not the right fit. But there's more than just those voices. There's a voice that was created inside of you, speaking to you, reminding you who you are. And this voice inside says you are strong enough, brave enough, smart enough, and more than capable. You are more than just a student. You are an original, a pioneer, a visionary, a history maker. You are a leader. Hey guys, how's it going? Transit, it is so good to be with you guys today. I love you all. You are incredible. Um, if I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, my name is Ashlyn, and I'm pumped to be with you guys this morning. We are going to be continuing in our series called You Are a Leader. This is part two of it. And if you guys were here last week, you heard Louie talking a little bit about how there are ways that each and every one of you in this room are leaders whether it's in your friend group, whether it's in your family, maybe it's at your school. There's all sorts of different ways that you guys lead. And then you got to small group and you actually got to talk a little bit about leaders in your own life, leaders that you look up to, leaders that you respect, that you follow. And so this morning, I wanted to start off talking about two of my favorite leaders. Now, these are two leaders from movies and they might be a little bit unexpected, and you'll see why here in a few minutes. But these two people right here, we have Mirabelle from Encanto. Any Encanto fans out here? Okay, a few. Yes, the soundtrack is amazing. Um, and then this is Miles Morales from, yeah, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, shameless plug, Across the Spider-Verse is coming out soon. And Wow, we have a lot of fans. I really cannot wait to see that movie. Um, but guys, these are two of my favorite leaders because I can relate to them a bit more. If you think about the story of Mirabelle, she literally starts off, she is the one person in her family that doesn't actually have these magical powers. And this whole movie is about how she's searching and looking for them. She wants to get these powers because she wants to feel worthy enough and she wants to make a difference. And in the end, she actually ends up being the one to save her family without any of those powers at all. But it's quite the journey to get there of ups and downs, some mistakes, some successes. But in the end, she's such a leader in her family, even without the powers. And then you have Miles over here who, like any Spider-Man, is bit by a radioactive spider, gets all of these spider senses and powers, but he has no idea what to do with them whatsoever. And this movie is about him learning how to use those powers. But even up until the end of the movie, he teams up, you can see in this picture too, you have little Peter Porker over here and uh, another Spider-Man. He teams up with these people to save the universe, but there's a part where they don't even want him to come because he doesn't know how to use them correctly. He's made a ton of mistakes. And so they're like, yo, dude, like you got to stay back. Spoiler of the end of the movie, he actually does end up saving the day. And I love these leaders because in my own life, I make mistakes all the time too, so it gives me a little bit of hope. But I say that they're unexpected leaders because unfortunately, when we tend to think about leaders today, we automatically go to people that we think are perfect or have it all together. They don't make mistakes. They have their life figured out. And if we go as far to think that, oh, only leaders that are perfect can actually make a difference, then we might actually in our own minds think to ourselves that I can't be a leader because I make mistakes. I can't be a leader because I make mistakes. And if you actually believe this, then this whole series is kind of pointless. It's kind of fake. This series is called You Are a Leader. And you're like, wait a second, that's not how it works. Because I think about my own life and it's like, hey, yeah, I have forgotten to do my homework a bajillion and one times. Or this test that I took, I got a really bad grade on, 
so I'm embarrassed. Whether you actually spent the time studying for it or not, whenever you get those grades back and you make a grade that's lower than you thought you were going to make, you kind of feel a little sick inside. Or maybe you dropped that pass or you missed that goal and it looks like it caused your team to lose the game. So there's no way that you could be a leader on the team, no way that you could be captain because you're not good enough. Or maybe it's in your friend group at school and, you know, you get caught up gossiping, talking bad about other people. And for a time, it's okay because no one else knows. But then other people find out and it causes all this drama and all this tension. You're like, well, I can't be a leader amongst my friend group. Like, I just cause issues here. Or maybe there's something that goes on in private that you haven't told anyone about. And you'd be ashamed and embarrassed if anyone knew and so you, you think to yourself, hey, I've made all of these mistakes. I mess up every day, so I really can't be a leader because that's not what leaders do. Leaders don't make mistakes. Leaders don't fall short. They're supposed to be the best. They're supposed to be the people I look up to. They're supposed to have it all together. Or do they? And so this morning, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the story of a guy named Peter. Now, not like Peter Pan or Pete Davidson or any other like Peters that you may know, but Peter, who was a follower of Jesus, he was a disciple of Jesus, he was actually a close friend of Jesus. Now, how the story of Peter starts out is he's actually a fisherman when Jesus comes into his life, and Jesus comes and calls him to follow him and to do life with him. And Peter's like, okay, sure, like, let's do this. So in the duration of time that Peter and Jesus are doing life together, there's a lot of different things that happen. And so I want to walk through a few different scenarios and a few different characteristics of this guy named Peter. Now, some people would look at the life of Peter and they'd say, hey, he's pretty ambitious. He is able to kind of take charge in different situations. He's pretty determined, pretty quick to speak, quick to act, just so he can get things done and kind of keep the ball rolling. He's an ambitious person. Other people can look at the life of Peter and you see that he's hardworking. I mean, he was a fisherman to start out. After all, that's a pretty tiresome job that takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. And that carried throughout his whole life, even walking with Jesus. And then he also was a guy who was known to, at times, have a really strong faith. I don't know if you guys know the story, but there is a time when literally the disciples are out in the ocean on a boat. Jesus comes walking to them on water. Jesus calls out to them. And Peter, because he has so much faith in this moment, actually is willing to get out of this boat in the middle of a storm and walk on water to Jesus. That's crazy. And so he sounds like a pretty awesome guy, right? But then we hear a little bit more about Peter, and he's actually someone that is also disrespectful. There was literally a moment where he's in conversation with Jesus and he basically calls Jesus of all people, people a liar. And Jesus responds to him and is like, hey, get behind me, Satan. I mean, ouch, right? If Jesus were to look at you and be like, yo, you're Satan in this moment? I mean, yikes, that's a pretty big deal. And there's also a time that Peter was apathetic. Literally right before Jesus was going to die on the cross for you and for me and for Peter, Jesus asks Peter, along with a few other disciples that were his closest friends, and he's like, hey, will you pray with me? Because he wanted people around him. He wanted people in his corner. And guess what Peter did? He literally fell asleep. After Jesus has done so many different things for him, Jesus asked Peter to show up for him this one time, and he falls asleep. He's apathetic. He's lazy. It's not intentional in that moment. And there's also a time that Peter was disloyal. Literally the night of Jesus' death, there are people talking, and they look at Peter, and they're like, hey, you know this guy, right? And out of fear, Peter's like, no, like, I don't know him at all. And he says this three different times. He disowns Jesus three different times, when honestly, he should have been showing up for Jesus the most. And so we hear all of this about Peter, and these are just a few of the attributes of Peter that describe his story in his life. And we may look at him and be like, hey, like, I'd be really hurt if I were Jesus in this moment, if someone were to disrespect me, to not show up for me, to be disloyal to me. Be like, I don't know if this is a guy worth following. I don't know if this is actually what makes a good leader. Like, yeah, there's some great things here, but there's also some not so great things because he makes mistakes. But I want you to look at this conversation between Jesus and Peter and see what Jesus says. So in the book of Matthew, this is the conversation that happens. 
says, then he, he being Jesus, asked them, them being the disciples, he asked them, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Jesus is sitting with all of his disciples. He's like, hey, who am I? Peter's the first one to answer, you're the son of the living God. And the conversation continues. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. And then he says, now I say to you that you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Now in this sentence right here, Peter, his name actually means rock. So when he gets to this sentence, upon this rock, AKA Peter, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. What Jesus is saying here is, hey, Peter, you are gonna be a very pivotal and influential leader in the building of my church. When you think about buildings, when you think about structures, the foundation of them is like solid rock. And that's exactly what Peter is in this moment. He's gonna get to be such a big part of the building of the church of Jesus Christ. And what's crazy in this moment is that Jesus, at this point, Jesus knows everything. He knows what's happened in your past. He knows what happens in your future. And so before this conversation, Peter had already messed up. And then after this conversation, Peter was still going to mess up. And Jesus knew every single bit of this, yet he still is calling him a leader. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Peter is going to be able to get by any consequences that come from his actions. No, he still has to own up to where he messed up. He still has to own his mistakes. He still has to face the consequences of his actions, just like you and I have to do. Decisions that we make, actions that we make, some of those merit certain consequences. And consequences, honestly, can really be tough sometimes. I don't think anyone in this room likes consequences. I sure don't. Maybe you end up not being able to go to a friend's house or your phone is taken away or you get kicked off the team. Maybe you're in a position of leadership that you now no longer get to be in because of the decisions that you've made. But the good thing about consequences, as much as we hate them, is that they can actually allow us to learn from our mistakes. They allow us to learn from our mistakes and we have a good enough God that God actually uses our mistakes to make us better leaders. God can use these mistakes. He can use the consequences that we face to make us better leaders. Guys, we have a really gracious God. And it's in his grace that he actually calls you to a better life. He calls you to be a better leader because he wants what's best for you, even when you don't understand it. And this is what Peter got to experience for a ton of his life. Each time he made a mistake, Jesus was right there with him able to teach him. And as a result, Peter became a better leader. And Peter was one of the most influential people in the church's history. And so for you guys in this room, if you're anything like me, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. But those mistakes don't actually have to define us. We can still be amazing, great leaders because of what Jesus has done for us. But we have to be willing to actually let him work in our lives. And we have to be willing to do a few things. So I want to wrap this up by talking about two different action steps that I need you guys to do whenever you find yourself in this situation. When you make mistakes, when you mess up, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to own it. Yeah, this is scary. This means that instead of hiding it, instead of lying about it, you're actually going to go to your friends or your parents or your teachers, and you're going to own where you mess up. You're going to tell the truth. And that may sound so scary and so frightening, but I'm telling you, it is so much better than carrying the weight of a lie. Carrying the weight of a lie will eat you from the inside out. But actually being able to own it, actually telling the truth, that's what's gonna set you free. And you may not believe me right now and that's okay, but at least just try it. And if you try it, I can guarantee you, you're gonna be so grateful that you did. And then the second thing I want you guys to do is I want you to learn from it. I want you to learn from your mistakes. So often when we make mistakes, we're embarrassed, we're uncomfortable, we want to just forget about it, we want to push past it, pretend it never even happened. But if you do that, you're not going to be able to learn from it. So no, I want you to actually sit in it for a minute. I want you to go talk to someone about it. 
whether it's your small group or your small group leader, your friends or your family, your teachers, your coaches. I want you to actually sit and talk to them about it. That way you can assess the situation. You can see what happened. You can see what you did. You can see how it affected other people around you because our mistakes always affect other people, not just us. And then as a result of actually assessing the situation, you can in turn choose to make better and wiser decisions in the future that make you better leaders. And I know this is scary, and I know this is hard, and I know this is probably not what you want to hear, but I'm telling you it's worth it. It was worth it for Peter. It's been worth it for me. It can be worth it for you. It was worth it for Mirabelle and Miles in these stories that we talked about earlier. And so when you guys go to small group today, I want you to unpack this a little bit more. I want you to be willing to talk about it, talking about times that maybe you've messed up and you haven't owned it or learned from it, and times that you have messed up and you actually have done this, and the difference between the two. But I really think that this could change your life. So as we go to small group, I want you to be thinking about this question first, and then I'll pray for us and dismiss us. But who is one of your favorite unexpected leaders? Last week you talked about a favorite leader, but I want you to think about someone that maybe you wouldn't have thought would start out as a leader because of the decisions that they make, but because they were willing to learn from them, they became an amazing leader. Let me pray for us. God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much for each and every one of these students in this room and that they chose to come to transit on a Sunday morning when they could have been doing so many other things. I ask that you would bless them for that and that smogger would be an amazing time today where they actually get to learn more about each other and they get to learn more about you. And as a result, they get to live a better life because you want what's best for us. I thank you so much that you're a good God who actually uses our mistakes and makes us better leaders and makes our lives better as a result of it. But I ask that you'd help them to be willing to listen to you and be willing to see you at work in their hearts and in their lives. I thank you so much for your love for us. I thank you so much for this day. In your name I pray.